Hi, I'm Dr. Ryan Slinsky, one of the spinal cord injury physicians who works at the model systems here at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. Today, we're going to be discussing autonomic dysreflexia. So, autonomic dysreflexia, or AD as it's sometimes called, is an important and potentially dangerous complication that you may be prone to having after your spinal cord injury. In this short video, we're gonna talk about a few of the basics of AD. Autonomic dysreflexia is a condition where your blood pressure has the potential to rise to dangerously high levels, usually caused by a painful stimulus below your level of injury, commonly one which you can't even feel. The most common source of AD is the bladder, either because a catheter might be clogged if you use an indwelling catheter, or that your bladder is too full if you use intermittent catheterization, or that you might have a urinary tract infection. These are all things that may have caused you pain before your level of injury that now you may not be able to feel. Other common painful causes of AD are constipation and stool impaction or pressure injuries on your skin. Knowing what's going on in your body during AD can be helpful in understanding it and also helpful in addressing it. Prior to your injury, when your bladder was full, for example, that signal would go from your bladder back to your spinal cord. When your spinal cord saw that painful signal, a reflex would go directly from the cord back to the blood vessels in that area, telling them to squeeze down tight and stop any potential bleeding that might be happening. That signal would then go up your spinal cord to your brain, where your brain would say, no, it doesn't look like we're bleeding, we just need to go to the bathroom, and tell those blood vessels in the area that they need to relax. However, after injury, even though the first part of that reflex is still in place, telling those blood vessels to squeeze really tight in response to that local pain, because of the damage to the spinal cord, the brain doesn't get the signal that it's just from an overly full bladder. This means that those blood vessels just continue to squeeze tighter and tighter and tighter, increasing your blood pressure to higher and higher levels. Because of the wiring in your spinal cord, individuals with SCI at or above the T6 level are particularly at risk for AD. Increases in blood pressure aren't always obvious. The most common symptoms people have while they're experiencing AD are headaches, sweating, changes in your heart rate, either going low or at times increasing, flushing, where the skin above the level of injury might turn red, you might feel very hot. You can have anxiety or a runny nose. As you well know by now, everyone's spinal cord injury is a little bit different. So you may have different presentation of AD than a friend with a very similar spinal cord injury. If you think that you're having AD, it's important to check your blood pressure. If that top number, that systolic pressure, is more than 20 points higher than your baseline, you're having AD. Lots of times, mild, low-grade AD can be managed at home by you or your caregiver. However, if that top number on your blood pressure is over 150, or if it's not coming down after you try to manage AD on your own, it is important that you go to the emergency room as you might be at higher risk for more serious complications like stroke, hemorrhages in your eyes, or even death. To manage AD, the first steps are to bring that pressure down and buy time. To bring down your pressure, sit up or have someone help you sit up. You might remember from inpatient, the first time that you sat up, you felt lightheaded. That's your blood pressure coming down, and that's really the effect that we're looking for here. Then, remove any constrictive clothing like head stockings on your legs or an abdominal binder if you use either of those. Those are helping bolster your pressure and not what we need right now. Now that you bought a little bit of time, next, the key step is to look for that potential source of pain. First checking that your bladder is emptying, as I mentioned, that is the most common source of dysreflexia. If you have an indwelling catheter, ensure that it's draining. Potentially flush it with some warm sterile saline if you have that available at home. If you perform intermittent catheterization, attempt to pass a catheter to drain your bladder. So a quick tip here is that lots of times with dysreflexia, that sphincter uh, in your bladder, which leads into your into your bladder can be especially tight. So just hitting that spot over and over again with a catheter can actually make things a little bit worse. To address this, apply some gentle pressure when you're passing the catheter, and sometimes that is enough to make that sphincter open up and allow access to your bladder so you can drain it. A more advanced tip is if you're still having trouble passing that catheter, knowing that the external urethral sphincter is wired on the same circuit as the anal sphincter is important. 
So just the same as you do a digital stimulation in your rectum, if you insert two fingers into the anal sphincter and do what's called scissoring, where you make a scissor sign inside your rectum, dilates out that anal sphincter, and since it's wired in parallel to the external urethral sphincter, can cause some relaxation of that as well, which allows you to pass the catheter a little bit easier. If neither of those yield results, consider if you may have a urinary tract infection. The most common signs associated with this are changes in the smell of your urine or increases in urine sediment or color change. Next, if addressing your bladder doesn't bring the pressure down, check your bowels and your skin. If you're on a bowel program and haven't had good results in recent days, that could be the painful cause that's leading to the dysreflexia, and that really needs to be addressed. Checking in the rectal vault to make sure there isn't any hard stool that's impacted uh, could help bring your pressure down. If you have pressure injuries or an open wound, this could be the painful cause, and you want to ensure that you aren't putting additional pressure on them or sitting on them. Even if you don't have existing pressure injuries, it's still important to check the skin and make sure that you aren't sitting on a pen cap or that your shoes aren't too tight or something that may cause you pain that you can't necessarily feel. If you're able to identify and remove the source of pain, your blood pressure should come back down to around where it is at baseline. If it continues to climb though, this could be a medical emergency and it's recommended that you go to the emergency department as the pressure can keep building and building and building until it gets to those dangerous levels. In the emergency department, they have medications that can help bring your blood pressure down as they try to help find that painful cause. Your outpatient physician may also provide a prescription for medication that may be helpful in these emergency situations if you're having AD with some frequency. If you end up going to the emergency room, it's good to know that not all providers are as familiar with AD as you are now. The Spinal Cord Injury Model Systems has a printed wallet card describing AD that some people find helpful to bring with them in these situations, and there's a link for this below. To prevent AD from happening in the first place, the key is to really stay on top of managing your bladder and your bowel and your skin the best you can, which is all the things you're already doing on a daily basis anyway. On top of that, be considerate of activities that may cause pain or be uncomfortable to your body below the level of injury that could lead to AD. Autonomic dysreflexia or AD can be scary, but serious medical complications from it appear to be rare. Being aware of what's going in on inside your body during an AD event, knowing how to identify that you're having AD and how to manage it will help minimize these risks even more.